If you're working every day, some job will get no pay. I know it's hard to see the light with darkness in your way. Listen, Listen let me tell you what you want to do. Open up there it is, sunshine, sunshine on my mind. I see a brighter day in you. Don't you miss it for the hell you're going through. Sunshine on my mind. I got sunshine all the time. I got sunshine everywhere I go, and I want you to know. I got sunshine when it hurts, and when nothing seems to work. I got sunshine. Do you see the sunshine? I got sunshine all the time. I got sunshine everywhere I go, and I want you to know. Hello. And with nothing seems to work, I got sunshine. Do you see the sunshine? Da 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 da. Y'all sing along. Sing along with me. Sing it. I'll be trying. Acting like I can sing. Da 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 da. I had to put my music on today. I had to. I had to get my vibe going right. I got sunshine on my mind. I got sunshine all the time. I got sunshine in my hair. I got sunshine everywhere. I got sunshine. Y'all got sunshine. I got sunshine. Do you see my sunshine? Yeah. Halo, halo, halo. Diva. Yeah. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, Justin, Jason's in the house. Brandon's in the house. Princess is in the house. We are here for week two of the Trust, Trust Law Basics for Business Seminar. Y'all want to be a part of it. Princess, you ready to set us up? I guess not. All right, then. Well, let me continue on. <laughs> this is week two. Listen. If y'all want to be a part of the Back to Basics, what you want to do is go to UNA, UNAUniversity.com forward slash learn, UNAUniversity.com forward slash learn, and uh, you can be a part of the seminar. Go ahead and uh, sign up there. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This is week two. This is the pre-session to the Trust Law Basics for Business seminar, and this week... We are dealing with the security agreement. But what are we talking about in this open session? We're talking about building your nation, building your nation. So uh, as we prepare to go into the seminar, which starts at 7, at the top of the hour, 7 p.m. Eastern, I want you all to get ready to go by going to UNA, UNA University dot com forward slash learn l-e-a-r-n now this is the business seminar now this is the advanced seminar we moving it in this one and uh there's a lot of things going on we've got our we got a our group where we're supporting each other uh we're a support system for each other we have uh our businesses we're getting them in check making sure everything is under trust all of your assets are under trust uh bringing you uh in touch with our bankers and our commissioners of UNA. So this is a big seminar. So if you want to be a part of it, go to UNAUniversity.com forward slash learn. Now, if you're not ready for this, if you don't have a business, you can go ahead and go to the Back to the Basics seminar. Go to DivaLarie.com. D-I-V to the A-L-Y-R-I.com. DivaLarie.com. You can go there and get enrolled in the Back to Basics and that seminar is only $300. You can get that. 
get all the videos for it, be a part of our private group so that you can be uh, get in touch with uh, some people who are going through the session and actually learn what's going on, all right? So now I want to go ahead and go into this. Uh, thank you all for joining us on Facebook. Y'all know I love you. Y'all know I love you. Y'all know I love you. Facebook, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Clubhouse, thank you all for joining us. Uh, as we get ready to go into the Trust Law Basics for Business Seminar, uh, Justin and Jason, hope to see y'all in there sometime. Uh, I got some people in the house. Alicia's in the house. Alvin, bro's in the house. Scott Jeffrey, sunshine, sunshine on my mind. Yeah. All right, so let's get this thing going. Divine, Jennifer, thank you all for joining us. All right, so now let's get into this what are we talking about first of all before i go on before i go on i want to give thanks to the spirits for allowing me to share this information with you all uh it's very important uh, that we learn what the laws are because as they say ignorance of the law is no excuse and so you got to understand we're not just talking about man's lower laws we're talking about the higher laws the universal laws as well and there are the most important laws so y'all want to be a part of this uh, session because um, a lot of people don't understand when they get into wanting to gain their sovereignty and all of this they don't understand you're going on a spiritual walk all right a spiritual walk and that's what our people in the trust law basics for business uh, seminar and we're doing we're getting that understanding of all of the laws especially the higher laws so we're going into it a little bit today uh, in this pre-session, all right, now, before I get into it again, I thank the spirits for, for giving, a, giving me the opportunity to share this information. And I thank y'all spirits with vessels for being so beautiful and showing up and wanting to learn this information. Thank you. All right, so now let's get into this thing. Let's get into it. Now, what are we talking about today? Uh, we want to go into building your nation, building your nation and what it takes to build your nation. Now, uh, I'm going to in invite you all to go to unarepublic.com forward slash docs, D-O-C-S. unarepublic.com forward slash docs, D-O-C-S. And what you're going to find there is the hierarchy of laws. Go get that right now because we're going to go over it. The hierarchy of laws, very important. This is your understanding of what it is to have sovereignty and then to what, what's needed to stand under trust, all right? UNARepublic.com forward slash docs. Go ahead and get that because we're going to go into the hierarchy of laws, which are very, very important in understanding where you stand, especially when you're building your nation. This is very important. And I want to thank all of my, I have some students here that are going into the Zoom room. Uh, at the top of the hour at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have that seminar every uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, they're prepared to load up into the Zoom room. Uh, hierarchy of Laws is what I want you all to go ahead and download if you don't have it. Some people have it up on their refrigerator. They have printed it out. They have put it in their refrigerator. Some people have it in their wallets. It is very importante. Importante. So go ahead and get that. All right, as we pull it up here, uh, once again, thank everybody for joining us. Thank the spirits for giving me the opportunity to share this information. All right, does everybody have it in the house? We've got Asia. Thank you for joining us, Asia, in the clubhouse. We've got uh, quite a few people, a few people. And uh, thank you all for joining us. All right, so here we go. The uh, hierarchy of laws. Now, you all should have that downloaded by now. If you don't, go get it. Print it out. Uh, UNARepublic.com forward slash docs, D-O-C-S. You want to have this because this helps you to understand where you stand in this whole game. All right. Now, the reason why I'm going on the hierarchy of laws, because I told you this is a spiritual walk. For those of y'all who understand this game, it's not just about gaining your freedom or your sovereignty. It's about understanding who you are as a God, as a spiritual entity in this game. When you get that, then all these other laws, they become child's play. All right. So at the top of this hierarchy 
of law chart. What you're going to see is the universal laws, all right? That deals with energies, energies that you put out, how they come back to you. Uh, the next thing you're going to see is natural laws. That deals with things that manifest in this third dimension and what the nature of those elements are. Uh, then we have laws of maxim. Those are known as God's laws. They come straight from the Bible. Every law that you know on man's book, it comes straight from that Bible. This is why it's important for you to understand why the laws of maxim and that Bible are so powerful. You want to use it as a tool and a weapon when you're gaining your freedom. All right. Now we have a sovereign. Sovereign. Those are those of us who are uh, uh, self-governed. We stand under God's laws, self-governed. The next thing you have is contract law. Contract law deals with the contracts or the agreements made between sovereigns. Now, then we have treaties. I'm going through this because I, uh, what we're going to do, I'm talking about what's going on with respect to what we're dealing with today. All right. Now, treaties deal with um, laws that are made between sovereigns that deal with a particular tract of land. Now, those of you all hey, who... Dave. Yes, sir. Uh, can you go back on the uh, contract law? I'm contract sorry, law? Sure. Okay. kind of missed it. All right. Please. So, okay, no problem. Contract law deals with a set of laws that sovereigns, when they make agreements, a set of agreements or a set of laws between sovereigns, all right? Oh, I'm running through it. See, I, that's why I told y'all, y'all better get in that uh, trust law or back to basics. If you don't have the back to basics, uh, go to devlarie.com and you can pick up that back to basics and it's going to go over all of this, these things that we're talking about. But back to contract law, that is a set of laws which sovereigns adhere to in contracting. All right. So, you know, offer plus acceptance equals contract. That's what we're talking about in contract law. Now, we're, when we're talking about treaties, with the, which is the next thing on the list, a treaty are laws made between two sovereigns that deal with a particular tract of land. Remember, you are made up of every element of this planet. You are walking land. You are a state, in fact. So when we make our declarations and you send that to the county, that is a treaty. You got to understand that. You're contracting. You're saying, hey, this tract of land has the name and the title of whatever you put on your treaty. And it is owned by whatever you put on your treaty. So that is a, your declaration is a treaty. All right. Now, in recognizing that, the next thing underneath treaties is constitution once again for those of y'all who don't have it we're looking at the hierarchy of laws go to unarepublic.com forward slash docs d-o-c-s and you can download this now this is free information i'm telling you uh <laughs> just this information alone i can hit you up i'm trying to make sure you get the information uh so that you can grow in, in your walk all right now the next thing under treaties is constitution a security agreement is a constitution, all right? It is a set of laws created by the sovereign that govern the corporation created by the sovereign. So when you're claiming or declaring your vessel, you're putting a set of laws pertaining to this vessel, and that is your security agreement. It is also seen as your constitution, your set of laws. That is a private document. We go into that. And so one of the things we want to talk about when we're speaking on nation building is recognizing, again, this hierarchy of law and who you are and where you stand with respect to it. This is very important because, uh, you know, a lot of times we have people who are wanting to build a nation, but then you, you come against this fight with these agencies because, uh, you really don't know who you are and where you stand and who they are. So when we start to recognize what their true power is or their lack of power, then we know that there's less of a fight when dealing with them. We have less of a fight when dealing with them because we know what their true jurisdiction is. All right. 
Uh, this is why some of us know that when it comes to their courts, we really don't have to deal in their courts because their courts truly are not, uh, they're not federal and they're truly are, are private corporations. All right. So we're dealing at a higher level because we know who we are. And this is why it's very important to recognize uh, this hierarchy of law chart as we're going to be going through it in the seminar. Now, Princess, are you with me? I'm here. All right. You want to set us up? All right. Well, we want to thank everyone here on Clubhouse and on Facebook for joining us live in the UNA Law Club. We're discussing with Eva Lurie Trust Law Basics for Business, Building Your Nation. It is a pre-session to an ongoing session for folks in business to learn how the, the trust law basics that will help you privatize and secure your business. We thank Diva Lurie for her time. We thank you for your time, mind, and energy. If you will, hit that ping button down in the bottom. Invite as many friends as you can into the room. If you have any comment after the discussion, please raise your hand. We'll bring it up to the stage, at which time we'd like for you to mute the mic. I'll wait for Diva to call on you to speak. Let us know when you're done speaking. And then uh, just have a healthy discourse, one with each other. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, there's a little greenhouse in the upper left-hand corner. Click on that. Become a member of the UNA Law Club. That'll let you know when we have future events. Once again, thank you for coming out tonight and joining us. I want you to, to have a pen and notebook handy and pay attention. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Princess. Pay attention. Uh, is there anybody in the clubhouse that has any questions for me? Uh, Aisha's here. Anthony's here. Uh, uh, Jason, did you have any questions for us with respect to what we're dealing with on this hierarchy of law, which is highly important? Oh, no. Okay. No, okay, and thank you so much, Jason. Now, if you all have any questions on Facebook, please let me know. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get, get into... All right, just check it. I'm going to go ahead and get into some actual information on building your nation now and why it's important. Now, when we're talking about these declarations and security agreements, the reason why we're going into it is because we're talking about putting your business under trust. And the reason why uh, this is so important about putting your business under trust, because we, remember, when you purchase anything, and you purchase your house, your car, uh, any other uh, items, your computer, you have, a, you have purchased it under the name of your all cap corporation. Now the deal with that is it is still sitting within the matrix. And if you have not, first of all, captured your all capital letter name, then your assets are sitting in the matrix along with your all capital letter name. So not only do we go and put your all capital letter name under trust, we're putting your assets under trust as well. Why is this important? Because when they're sitting in the matrix, they can be levied. They can be garnished. They can be taken. All right. When we're putting things under trust, we're taking them out of the public and putting them into the private. This means, this means that they can't, be taken they can't be levied and we show you as we're in the, the the seminar how to use all of these instruments so when we're talking about the declaration security agreement ucc when we're talking about that we're showing you how to use those tools a lot of people and y'all need to listen and pay attention to what i'm speaking on because a lot of people just think the paperwork just works for you You've got to know how to use them. They are tools. So if you don't know how to use these tools, then they might as well, you might as well not have them. So it's not just about somebody filling out paperwork for you 
or you just coming in and you knowing the sign or whatever, filing this document, you have to know how to stand on it. That's what the most important thing is. So we get a lot of people, I've gotten a lot of people to come to me and say, oh, well, I had such and such and I paid him to make me free. You cannot pay anyone for your freedom. You cannot pay anyone for your freedom. All right. If you're ignorant, then you're going to maintain a state of slavery. If you're ignorant, you're going to maintain a state of slavery. So your knowledge is what frees you. This is why we're talking about this hierarchy of law chart. If you don't have it, go to unarepublic.com forward slash docs and download it. Uh, go to some of our seminars, uh, which are open sessions where we talk about this. We give you the information with all of uh, the remedy. Our seminars are for those who are actually doing the process. All right. Those who we are walking you through it step by step from beginning to end, how to prepare your documents, where to file them, what to uh, how to uh, send them to yourself, what uh, how to stand on them, what they mean. All of this is very important. All right. It's not just about the paperwork. It's about your knowledge. Go to unarepublic.com forward slash docs and get these, this, this, uh, hierarchy of law chart, download it, print it, put it on your refrigerator, know it. All right. And then go to our seminars, uh, where we have our open sessions and you can get it. Now, if you want to enroll in the seminar and you haven't haven't been uh, aware of this information, you want to get into our Back to Basics program, you can go to devilarie.com and get that D-I-V to the A-L-R-I.com. All right? You can go to devilarie.com and get that uh, seminar. It's only $300. You can uh, enroll in that. We're going to pull you into the, the seminar. We're going to give you a, a com complimentary consultation uh, once you've watched all of those videos. And then you're going to get a wealth of knowledge. With our uh, business trust law basics for business program, this is when you're advanced. When you've got your assets, you're ready to put them under uh, a, a trust. Your business, your nation, your child even, your cars, whatever it is, we're going to the next level of making sure we secure our assets. We also are going to the next level of supporting each other, making sure your business uh, grows and you understand what it takes to make sure you get, you are financially uh, stable in your own business. All right. We're dealing with that in the, the, the seminars. So if you want to be a part of that, you go to unauniversity.com forward slash learn, L-E-A-R-N, learn, L-E-A-R-N, and be a part of that. So now, uh, what we're dealing with, once again, is once you have your business under trust, once you have your business under trust, then what you have to recognize is you have created a nation. A lot of people don't recognize that. So let me go into this so we can understand what's going on. There are many corporations um, and they don't have sovereignty. But what they do have is they have a set of rules and laws. Now, for example, McDonald's. McDonald's is really a nation underneath. It's not a sovereign nation, but it's underneath the United States Corporation. Now, the deal is they have their set of laws. Um, and they have their flag. It's that, that big yellow M. That's their flag or their logo. When people are wearing their flag, they are declaring citizenship to McDonald's. That's really what's going on. They are a citizen of McDonald's. They are an employee of McDonald's, which is a citizen, a slave. And so McDonald's has its own set of laws that it has underneath its corporation. And these people that are employed by it are uh, to uh, adhere to those laws that McDonald's has in its, uh, it's what we would call a, um, a security agreement, which is a constitution for McDonald's. All right. Now, the difference here is that when you declare your nation, you're not under the United States Corporation. You are under God. You are sovereign under God. 
because you adhere to God's laws. You adhere to the laws of Maxim. You adhere to the universal laws. And so that's important to understand and recognize because with that sovereignty, that means you stand over the United States Corporation. Now, we talked about this the other day. When you go and you're registering your business, you're turning over ownership of your business. When you're talking about an LLC, a, a, a sole proprietorship, S Corp, incorporation, all of these other uh, 501c3, you've registered your business so you no longer own that business, all right? And since you no longer own it, you're coming up under the United States Corporation uh, and see, this is one of the things that a lot of these Indian, so-called Indian nations, have run into where they they uh, think they're sovereign, but really they're incorporated up under the United States Corporation. They don't have sovereignty. They are incorporated up under the United States Corporation. This includes uh, the Morris Science Temple. There's one of them that's incorporated up under the United States uh, Corporation, and it's not sovereign. It has no sovereignty. And this is why you need to make sure you recognize what the laws are when you go and you establish your nation. We're not asking for permission. We're not putting our business up under another corporation. We're not giving someone ownership of our corporation. We are declaring our corporation under God. And so it's important to understand the difference between those two. So... As we, uh, you know, prepare to the, at the top of the hour, we're going to go into it uh, and get deeper into walking you step by step, step by step through the process, what it takes, making sure your documents are set up right, making sure those tough questions are answered, those questions that stop you in your process. Because I got, we have people uh, coming into our seminars that have been doing this for years, five, ten years, and they still haven't filed their first document. All right, we need to make sure you go, go, go through the whole process and finish it, complete it, so that you can get started with your nation and putting all of your assets under trust to protect them. All right, Princess, are you with me? Right here. All right, Almighty's in the house. Lisa's here. Uh, uh, let's see who else is here. Uh, Michael. Michael Lane, thank you for joining us. Teresa, thank you for joining us. Princess, let's do a reset. All right. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us tonight live on Facebook and in Clubhouse in the UNA Law Club. Tonight, we're featuring Diva Lurie from UNA University. We're discussing trust law basics for business. Trust law basics even for life. And this is a pre-session to our ongoing session that we have weekly, every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can enroll in that session by going to unauniversity.com forward slash learn. Again, that's unauniversity.com forward slash learn. You're not too late either. We're just at the second week of training, so you're, you won't have a whole lot of catching up to do. Uh, to be brought up to speed, and it is a 10-week course that will set your wheels in full motion. All right, well, uh, make sure you have a pen, a piece of paper, and pay attention. We're going to pass it back to Diva. Pay attention. All right, all right, so now, getting back to this, putting your business under trust. Now, let me see if I have any questions Real quick, uh, Asia, do you have any questions? Jason, do you all have any questions? Uh, because I just want to take some questions while I'm here. You know, normally uh, I don't take a whole lot of questions. Uh, thank you, Almighty. But I just want to take this opportunity just in case someone has any questions. I want to be able to get to them uh, so that, uh, you know, we can provide you some remedy if possible. And if not, once again, y'all can go to uh, dblurie.com and get that back to basics seminar uh, so that you can have it. All right, now, uh, getting back onto this, building your nation. Let's talk about, because we're, there's a document we're going to be going over today in the seminar. It's called uh, the security agreement. Now, 
The security agreement is that document, once again, that contains all of the laws that deal with your corporation. It's important to uh, have this agreement because in our security agreements, we include uh, quite a few things. Uh, and, and one of those things includes copywriting and trademarking your document. All right, copywriting and trademarking your name of your nation. All right, that's very important. Listen, you know, you pay you pay thousands of dollars to a lawyer to get you this information, thousands, and then you still don't have an understanding of how to truly stand on this information. This is why you want to come into the university, all right, so that you can get a full understanding of what's going on. Uh, Almighty asked the question, it is if my business is sovereign and under trust, don't my original business, which is the all caps name, has to be in trust first? All right, Almighty, the question, thank you, for, thank you for that question, Almighty. All right, so now the question is, does your all capital letter name have to be under trust first in order for your business uh, to be sovereign? No, it doesn't have to be, but you want it to be. All right, so now uh, you can put anything under trust at any time. So, but the thing is, the, the thing is when you put your business under trust, it's best to have your all capital letter name under trust as well. So this is how this works. Uh, what we do with the back to basics, that's going to deal with getting your all capital letter name uh, copyrighted and trademarked. All right, copyrighted and trademarked. Once you get that copyrighted and trademarked, and then you also declare what your name for your vessel is, because normally we're going to have what we call a spiritual name or your real person name. So when you have your spiritual name, all right, once you have that, uh, and then you declare your all capital letter name that's on the birth certificate uh, and, and on the Social Security card, you're declaring all of that. Once you have declared that, then that and copyrighted and trademarked it. Now what you want to do is go ahead and copyright and trademark uh, and trust and put in trust your business. So that way, um, all of them are moved out of the the matrix. All of them are moved out of the public. All right. Uh, but even if you have already put your business under trust and your all capital letter name is not under trust, you still your business is still protected. Yes, just so you'll know. Uh, yeah, it's still protected under trust. Uh, however, you know, it just depends. There are some things that you want to take care of, though, because if you've gotten, if you haven't secured that all capital letter name and you're claiming that the all capital letter name is the one on the trust, you might have some issues. So this is why we just, we do all of it. We first do the all capital letter name and then we pull the businesses out, all right? So normally, once you got the first one done, your all capital letter name, the other one is pretty simple to do as well. All right, so now I wouldn't say simple, but you, you can do, once you learn how to do that, you can do the others as well. Now, who else has a question? As I get back to this, uh, getting back to it, in, in business, in, once you're building, as you're building your nation, what you've got to recognize is, thank you, Almighty. So once you're building your business, what you've got to recognize is you want to uh, uh, be ready to pull everything under trust and recognize how to stand on your documents. All right. Now, Princess, do you have any questions? Did I miss any questions over on that end? No, not that I've seen. Okay. And do you have any any questions or any thoughts about something that I might need to need to go over? Cause I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, no, no, no. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Good. So now, all right. So we're about to close up because we got, we're about to get into this at the top of the hour, uh, at the top of the hour, we're going into it. Remember if you have not had the basics, y'all know I told you those three documents that we talk about, Declaration, Security Agreement, UCC. All right, we want you to get those, all right, and learn how to use them. You can go to the Back to the Basics uh, seminar. Go to the Back to the Basics uh, 
seminar, go to devlarie.com, D-I-V to the A-L-R-R-I.com, and you can get all of the information on uh, what it takes to pull your all capital letter name out of the matrix and put it under trust, all right? That's devlarie.com, D-I-V to the A-L-R-R-I. Dot com And then when you want, you're ready, your business, all right, this seminar that we're having today, this is Trust Law Basics for Business, businesses. This is an advanced course, advanced. It's about pulling the business out, pulling all your other assets out. This is about creating your nation, all right, so you want to be a part of this seminar, go to unauniversity.com forward slash learn, L-E-A-R-N, unauniversity.com forward slash learn, L-E-A-R-N, and let's get you in that seminar so that we can start building with you and helping to make sure your nation and your business are strong and powerful outside of this matrix, which is what you're going to need. Now, uh, as I get ready to get out of here, all my people in the house who are going into Deborah, hello, thank you for joining us, uh, Amun, thank you for joining us, uh, Almighty, Cheryl, thank you. So now, if you all don't have any questions... We're going to load up into the Zoom room. I'll do it real quick. Okay. Um, Come on, Jason. Diva. You know, I got a lot of, <laughs> I always had questions. Um, okay. I know you got to go. Uh, 98 EIN. How do we get that? Okay. So the 98 number, what, thank you for that question, Jason. Uh, the 98 number is an EIN number that you apply for through the Internal Revenue Service. Now, um, a lot of times when you're going to get an EIN number, they're going to request your Social Security number. And that is something that uh, we at UNA chose not to do. Uh, and so there's, if, you, if you're using your Social Security number, you can get a 98 EIN number. However, you have to make sure. What is the 98 EIN number? The number 98, which comes before the number, is rep it represents a business or an organization that is not under the United States Corporation. So the 98 number represents an organization or business that is not under the U.S. Corporation. All right, that's what the 98 number, that's what uh, Jason is asking about. Now, in order to get one, uh, you have to have an address that's outside of uh, the United States Corporation. So a lot of times, or, or what we'll do is have an address in another country. Uh, for ours, uh, we had New Zealand, we had um, Cambodia, because we had addresses there, uh, we had uh, members there, and so we were able to use those addresses. And so when we applied, we had to send in a couple of different forms. We had to fax hours in. Some people are able to get theirs by the phone. That's if you have um, a social security number. If you don't, uh, a lot of times you're going to have to fax it in, which is what we do. We did. Now, some people are able to, like I said, uh, we have uh, some people who, who can help you with getting that uh, number same day. All right? So now, uh, if you want to have some insight on that, let us know. We'll be glad to help you. For us, we went through the route of taking this thing and we put it, uh, we faxed it. And then uh, that's how we got ours because we were, few, we were not using a uh, uh, social security number uh, in order to get that number. All right? Thank you for that and question. And what, what other countries? What, what countries, I mean? I was trying to write. You can, use, to write you can use any and country. I, I know you got to go. Yeah, you can use any country. Uh, it, it, just as long as it's outside of the United States. Now, the truth is, when you put something, when you say republic, republic anything is outside of the United States Corporation. But these agents are not knowledgeable about what the true laws are. So you can use any country. It can be... Uh, um, it can be any country that's outside of the U.S. It could be Mexico. It, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't use Canada. I wouldn't use Canada because really Canada is up under the United States Corporation. A lot of people don't know that. Right. But, uh, yeah, so use, you can use just about any country, and um, you're going to be fine. I was just letting you know the two that we did, uh, New Zealand and Cambodia. But as long as it's outside the U.S., uh, you can find, find you a business. 
um, or somebody who or you could have a partner, a friend, anybody who has an address outside the U.S. Use that address, and then that will be that will get you that nine eight number. Cool, cool, right. cool. So the biz, so you have to have a biz inside of that company, inside of that country, or no. as long as you have it. No, you just need that. Well, address. Well, you said a business address needs business address. Need to you can be you can have a outside friend, of the you US. can have a friend's address. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, thank you, thank okay. you, Diva. I appreciate that yeah, information. Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right, then. I should be getting that class soon too. All right. Like, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. But, All right. Okay. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. All oh, right. Yes. Does anybody thank else you. have any other questions? All right. I see somebody's in the house. I won't call any names. All right. So now, um, yes, Princess. Princess. All right. So here we go. Oh, yes. Yes. So you were saying that if a person hasn't taken their Back to Basics course, they sh they should take it before they take the business trust course. Yeah, I mean, if you have not, I mean, if you have a business, then we're going to move it, move you along right away. But if you don't have a business, then what I suggest you do, and you have, and you're not aware of this information, go to the trust law, uh, the back to basics rather. Go to back to basics at devalerie.com, devalerie.com. And uh, uh, sign up for that so that you could be accl acclimated. You can get those videos and, and you can run through those videos at your leisure. And you can go move as fast as you want or as slow as you want. With this seminar, we are walking through it. We are doing it. All right. So you want to be ready. Uh, we, you want to have your business ready or you want to go ahead and be ready to put things under trust because we're moving, we're doing it. All of our seminars are about actually effecting the process. So if you're new to this, go to devalerie.com and get the Back to Basics seminar. But if you have a business and you're really ready to move through this process and get your business under trust, come on in the seminar so we can get you acclimated. Last thing, social, uh -huh. social security card. What do we do with that? What do you mean, what do you do? What do I do with that? What do you mean, what do you do with that? Uh, don't, don't you suppose, uh, uh, after you get your 9-8, do you suppose to put that 9-8 on your social security, new social security card, or what? Or do you get a new social security card? No. How does that go? All right, so thank you for that question, uh, Jason, who's been listening to a lot of people. <laughs> All right, let's make this clear, Jason. <laughs> Uh, listen, what you, when, when I, I've gotten a lot of people who, when they might change their name or make a declaration, they want to go and put their name on the social security card or mess with the social security card. Leave that alone. Leave it alone. That is a business okay. that your mother created. Use it or just take control of it and shut it down or do whatever you want. But don't, don't go trying to put your your uh, declared name on a social security card because what you're doing is you're putting your spiritual name into the dead matrix. You don't want to do that. And uh, when you so get you, a new number. I, I mess around and make the, the uh, spiritual name dead, huh? Yeah, and, and when you get a wow. new, you get a 9-8 number, why would you want to put that back in the matrix when you just went through all this trouble to take it out the matrix when you're getting a 98 uh, number okay. the 98 number is to make sure it's not under the US corporation so you don't want to turn around and put it back to, uh, what is a social security card uh Jason what is a social security card I guess social security of, of administration right right under whom it's really not ours sir. It is um, yours. The U.S.? The U.S., right? Okay, yeah, it is yours. It's an account under the U.S. But the thing is, it's under the U.S. So if you've got a Social Security card, um, 
you got to recognize that that is dealing with the U.S. corporation. So anything you're trying to do with respect to putting a number, so your 9-8 number, the purpose of it is for your nation and to be outside of U.S. corporation. So if you go put that on the Social Security card, what, you, what you're done is put it back in the, in the system. And when you declare okay. your, uh, your spiritual name, you don't want to go put your spiritual name on the Social Security card because what you've done is put your spiritual name in the system. That's not, leave it alone. You can, listen, I'm telling you, and y'all listen up again. The social security card, the all capital letter name, it is not you anyway. It is a corporation. You could walk away from it and never deal with it again if you want to. The only reason why you get tied to that name or that social security number and all that is because you keep claiming to be it. You keep claiming to be it. So why would you want to put yourself back in the system? So leave it alone. That's what I say. Miss Diva. Yes. Now, why would you say such a thing like that? Who is this? Let's see. Arish, Arishus, Arushus. Why would I say such a thing like leave the Social Security card alone? Right. If you don't, if... Because, because first of all, Arushas, it's a corporation. Does that card, does that card represent you? Does that account represent you? Does it? You use it for commerce. Yes, but does it represent you, the spiritual entity? And using it for commerce. I it, said, I, I you answered it. my question, sir. When you got to come and, on my and session. Represent my, and represent who I am. I use does it. it represent your spiritual person? Answer that question. With the spiritual person, I use that document. You didn't answer my question. I'm so I'm going to so I'm I'm answer answering. that question since you asked me a question about why I would say okay. such a thing. Listen okay. to me, so sir. No, no, you listen to me. And Princess, if I need being, you to do this, right? you do it right away. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm trying to answer you. No, I, no I'm answering I you, Princess. Okay. Princess, I'm now, you listen up. The name represents a dead fictitious entity if you want to if you know how to use that for commerce yes you use it for commerce but you sure as hell do not take your spiritual name and put it on a social security card that's what i said and that's what i meant unless you don't have any sense about see this is a more a more who doesn't have a clue about why you wouldn't want to use your spiritual name on an all, uh, on a, a social security card. That's putting you back into the system. I'm not saying not to use it to do commerce, but you don't have to use that for commerce, and you sure as heck, when you declare your spiritual name, do not want to put that on a social security card. Do you understand, Mr. Arushas? Now I got to get out yeah, of here. And I'm telling you that's not and I'm telling you that's not true. Okay, you're telling me what's not that you would put your spiritual name on a social security card. Is that what you would do? My, my indigenous my indigenous appellation is on the security card. Okay, yes, then is. then you put yourself back in the system. No, I did not. Okay, is it on a social security card that deals with the US corporation? Yes, it is. Okay, so then are you telling me that when you put your all capital uh, or your a uh, spiritual name on a social security card that it is no, it is now not under the US corporation? No. But it's on a social security card that There's deals deal. with the system of I'm the US a, corporation. I'm, I'm not I'm not a US citizen. Okay. But you so put your name on it in the system. To me. Okay, so the fact is, when they run that, it comes up who I am. And by the fact is, I changed that to put my indigenous appellation on there and let them know exactly who I am. Everything about me is on public record. Yes. So what you're saying and is, and under so the system, you right? You haven't done those things. How can you speak on it? No, I have done. Listen. This is what I have done so that you understand that I don't need to be in the system to be uh, to be recognized by the federal government. Are you understanding? I'm That's not, what I'm, I'm telling I'm not you. A fed, I'm not a federal citizen. I didn't say That's anything. The the, no, the problem is you keep talking about a citizen. 
The problem is you keep talking about a citizen. And I didn't say anything about being a federal citizen. I said being federally protected. Let me tell y'all something before I get out of here. When we're talking about federal, when we're talking about federal, federal means a covenant with God. Federal means a covenant with God. Now, there are federal codes that all of these agencies, they have to respect. They have to respect that. And so when you are uh, protected by federal codes, they have to understand and, and protect you with respect to those codes. Now, what this guy has done is, yes, he's going to put his name in the system. He's put his spiritual name in the system. That's what he said he's sure done. Did. Okay, and so I'm sure not, did. and let me say this to you. If that's what you want to do, and that's how you want to um, operate under but commerce, you listen, that? listen you to what you ain't done it princess, to even, what to even princess, operate that way. That's how I operate with respect to the all capital letter name, sir. Okay. So, so you're not name? even getting the deal. You're not even getting the what's deal, and I don't have time to argue with him because I got another seminar yeah, to go with. So let him go. Let him name? go. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. I operate with the all capital letter name in that way. So if you want to do that, this is what I'm saying. You make another appellation. You can make another, the same way he made his spiritual name, you make another appellation. You don't put your spiritual name in there and be operating under that. That's what I'm saying. So this is, this is what I'm trying to let him know. Yes, I have done that with another appellation. I don't do that with my spiritual name, though. You don't put your spiritual name back in their system. That's what right. he's not getting. So you, and Diva, yeah. I just want to remind you, we're about one minute out from the session. So you guys that had your hands raised, it wasn't uh, ignoring you. We just don't have the time right now. Uh, let's let's resume this co co conversation though another time. Yes, Arushas. Yes, Next we would time, love for you to join and, us, and we can have a talk reflectively. I'll let Diva go ahead and close, but I just wanted to remind her because we're getting close to seven. Thank Thanks. you. So, yeah, you send Arushas a, a message because what Arushas has done is put his spiritual name, and that's what you don't do. Your spiritual name is spiritual, and that's where it needs to stay, not under somebody's system. So if you want to operate in commerce with them, you create another title, which is what I have done. And then you use that title, not your spiritual name. That's why I speak on that. All right, I got to go. I'm going to see y'all in the seminar. Diva! Bye-bye.